with me having the abilities to play NBA 2K22 next gen and current gen, I'm going to be end up giving you guys the best shooting badges and is describe what they do and what it gives you a, a decisive decision what you're going to put on your my player. I'm going to be showing you the best shooting badges, the best playmaking badges. So make sure you sit back, relax, and make sure you take all this information I'm about to give y'all boys. So look, I'm going to end up starting with the playmaking because this is a lot of new playmaking badges and a lot of you guys might not play NBA 2K21 next gen. So it's like things like bullet passer and returning badges like glued hands that I'm going to be talking about in this video as well especially like the badges that we already seen before like the quick first steps the handles for days ankle breaker stuff all like that but as i'm about to show you this right here i'm gonna put every badge in bronze that actually works and actually will be beneficial to you of using it on your my player as you got ankle breaker bullet passive floor general hyperdrive quick chain special delivery definitely is a beautiful badge and you got all the essentials that you really need quick first step handles for days dimer and bailout so look as them adding new badges to the game or badges that return that you did not experience because you're a current gen player, these badges, I can say, they are essential to your mind player. Especially badges like Bullet Passer, Glued Hands, and we already know about Bailout. Bailout is a badge that we had on both gens of the game. So look, as we have in new badges like Hyper Drive and Quick Chain, this is where it's going to expand when it comes to picking your badges that you want. I can say you would need, need at least 25 playmaking badges on current gen. And then for 25 upgrades in total for next gen, you would need about 30 to 32 playmaking badges upgrades on next gen. So as you know, on next gen, we have certain points that you have to use. As of on current gen, on current gen, if you got four upgrades, you can get Hall of Fame. But based on your my player, certain my players will not be able to get it based on their height, their attributes. It's a lot of things that come in with next gen when it comes to badges. As of next gen, you gotta worry about certain heights that you gotta pick for to get certain badge points, and then certain attributes to be able to unlock certain badge points. So look, as you're trying to get the variation that you want, by looking at these, these are the top three badges that you're gonna get off the rip. Handles for days, quick first step, and unpluckable. On any one that you want them on, you can have it on Gold Hall of Fame, the highest ability that you can get it on. It don't matter if you're 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 6 5'11". If you can get it on any high variation, do that, especially if you're on next gen. But if you're on current gen, and if you have Hall of Fame playmaking in your build and your pie chart, and you know you can get the badge on Hall of Fame, you can put all those badges on Hall of Fame. But when it comes to next gen, I know that it's going to be limited based on how you build your build. Some builds might not get quick first up on Hall of Fame. They might get it on silver. But badges like Bullet Passer, you definitely need to put that on. I do recommend Bullet Passer on gold. Any, anything else under Bullet Passer on gold is going to be very slow. Gold in Hall of Fame is literally the best. That, that's a badge that you want at its highest variation. But when it comes to glued hands, glued hands, you want glued hands on silver or Hall of Fame, but silver is just the sweet spot. You will still fumble the ball a little. So you will still, even with gold, you will fumble a little, but it won't be as much. And then when it comes to bailout, bailout on Hall of Fame is unnecessary. That's just wasted badge points. You do not need to waste them badge points on bailout on Hall of Fame. Use bronze or silver, but when it also comes in with your pass accuracy, especially on current gen as well. If you got a low pass accuracy, you're gonna mostly sometimes throw the ball out of bounds. So say you got a 50 pass accuracy, a 40 pass accuracy, you might wanna put that bell out on silver, but that's only if you have playmaking badge upgrades. But on next gen, if you got a high pass accuracy, you can use bell out on bronze, bell out on silver. But anything as past that is no point of you using it. But badges like hyperdrive and quick chain that's new to the game, these two badges right here can change the speed of how your mind player moves. Quick chain, it changes the speed of helping you dribble moves together. Like literally, it makes your mind player moves even quicker. When you do combos and stuff like that, it looks normal, but once you throw this badge on on Hall of Fame, you move crazy. Even if you put it on the highest, even on silver, it makes a big difference. But when it comes to hyperdrive, a lot of people ask me, isn't hyperdrive the same as downhill? Will be the point of me putting on hyperdrive? No, it's not the same. Hyperdrive is for moving forward anytime you want. Any dribble you do forward, moving up the court, it makes it even faster. But with downhill, it's not the same. It mostly only works when it comes to transition. It don't matter if it's an inbound play, you get fouled, y'all checking up at half court. Downhill will not activate. It will not. It's only working in transition. Only when somebody else shoots the ball, misses, you grab the rebound, or your teammate grabs the rebound in the back court, and then you take it up the court. By the time you get to half court, the badge does not activate anymore. 
But with hyperdrive, it activates anytime you move forward with the ball on the inbound, off a rebound, it doesn't matter. But we're looking at the badges for current gen and next, this is what the setup will look like. You could use stop and go. Stop and go is actually a great badge this year. I would recommend it on silver if you have enough badge points. But all the other badges are essential. As the main badges, like I said, quick first step, bullet passer, handles for days, unpluckable, then you got bell out on bronze. Those are the main badges that you're gonna need. Some of you guys maybe thought I forgot about Dimer. This year, or not even this year, I noticed this kind of last year. If you're not past half court and you pass the ball with Dimer, it doesn't pop up. So Dimer only works in the half court set. This works on threes, this works on 5v5, but on the twos, you don't have to worry about it. It's gonna pop up every time because it's half court twos. When it threes, you're gonna have to worry about it. If you don't pass half court when you're trying to make that pass to get Dimer for your teammate and give them that boost, it, they're not gonna get the boost. So if you're down court and your teammate is wide open, they're, you're cherry picking, they do not get Dimer. I'm gonna ask about post playmaker. Post playmaker is literally Dimer for every time you catch a rebound and pass out. That's literally the Dimer of getting off the rebound and you pass out to your guard or pass out to anybody that's open. That is literally Dimer off the rebound. But when it comes to Hall of Fame flashy passer or any of those special delivery, that badge is literally the same. If you throw a flashy pass, your teammate's gonna get a boost in their takeover. And also they're gonna get a boost in their jump shot. And now, as we're getting to the shooting category of NBA 2K22, look at this. These are all the badges I recommend, all the badges that actually work. I know Chef badge works, I know Limitless badge works. It's just a weird way you have to activate them badges. So I kept them off this list, unless you're gonna end up using it. But with the Chef badge, you have to go watch a video about Chef badge. It's a lot of things that you gotta do to activate that badge. But badges like Limitless, with Limitless, you have to shoot 30 feet of, literally 30 footer jump shots to even activate that badge. It don't matter if you're on a three point line, you're not gonna have the badge pop up. You have to shoot 30 foot jump shots, 30 to 35 foot jump shots for the badge to actually activate. So all these badges right here are badges that I would recommend. They work on the one of the highest ones, and you also finesse and make it on silver. But look, for the first badge that I'm gonna get into, y'all already know. The first badge that you need on this game, even if you grinding badges, even if you're trying to get your hot spots, use that sniper badge. If you don't use that sniper badge, I don't know what to tell you. Don't know what the sniper badge does. The sniper badge is literally the new flexible release. It's literally the common flexible release that, as you see, is not on the game anymore. But it's kind of supposed to prevent us getting full bar animations. If you remember from 2K20 all the way, I think maybe all the way from 2K18, 18 all the way up to 2K21, we all know about the full bar animation. You somewhat timed the jump shot perfect, and it still gives you a miss animation. But look, this badge is supposed to help you hit slightly earlies and slightly lates, basically close to the green window. So anytime you shoot a slightly early or late on Hall of Fame, on gold, on silver, you're going to have a higher chance to hit that shot, even if it's not green. But when you shoot a early or late, you're going to mostly miss that shot but you still have a chance to somewhat hit, but it's gonna make a penalty on your my player. But look, as of this badge right here, this is the number one badge of the game. Number one badge, it's not the most crazy broken badge on the game, but it's one of the top three badges I will want you to use on your play player. The next badge is stop and pop. Stop and pop, I can say it's for my guards. It's for my people who, who can at least put the ball on the floor and they wanna take a dribble to the left or dribble to the right and then shoot the ball. You can use this on Hall of Famer, on Silver. Say I say if you can get it on Hall of Fame, put it on Hall of Fame. But if you can only get it on Silver or even get it on Gold, use this badge. Because it boosts your rating once you come off the dribble on a three-pointer. It works on the mid range as well. They just don't want to put it on there. But it definitely works for mid ranges It's even more broken on mid ranges I think that this is a new badge. It is not a new badge. This badge has been in the game since 2K21 Next Gen. It's actually a badge that not that many people use because how Ghost Contest was, you didn't really need to use Stop and Pop how bad the Ghost Contest was. But as y'all all know, the Hot Zone Hunter, we've been seeing this badge since 2K20. This badge right here is the Don Dada of badges because you really need this once you get hot spots. But as of Blinders, if you didn't play 21 Next Gen, Blinders was one of the most broken badges. And this year, Blinders works somewhat the same. It is a great badge to use because if somebody's... If you know somebody's gonna be playing on your hip, it doesn't matter. They're not gonna get a contest on your shot. If they're playing from your side or from behind you, it's literally a blinder shot no matter what. 
as literally shooting a jump shot and if somebody's not closing out in front of you, it's literally going to be open or it's going to be a low percentage shot that they're not going to get a contest on it. But as you get mismatch expert, also the second most broken badges on the game, as you being a shorter player, you have the ability to shoot over taller defenders now. But this badge, I can say I'm rating it five out of five, five stars. It's five star badge right here. In the description of the badge, it tells after forcing a switch, a player with this badge will have a more success for shooting over taller defenders. Even if you don't have to use a screen, even if you don't want to have to do it like that, if most of the time you're getting guarded as a guard, you're going to have a lockdown on you. With the heights, I would prefer with using this badge is all the way to 5'7". You can use it even at 6'7", because most centers, I can, based on what game you play on current or next, I would say the tallest I would go is maybe 6'5", because centers on current and next are going to be 6'8", 7 foot. But what it comes to is based on your height. If somebody's two inches taller than you, or three inches taller than you, this badge is going to activate no matter what. So even if you're playing a guard and he puts his lockdown on you, not even with him switching his arrow, if no matter what, the center in the lock is mismatched expert on the pick and roll or the pick and pop, no matter what. But when it comes to the next badge, Green Machine, Green Machine, you only need this badge on bronze or silver this year. I wouldn't re recommend anything higher, but you could put it higher on gold, but anything higher than that is no point. But with Deadeye, Deadeye is silver. If you don't have enough badge points, put it on silver. But it is a great badge this year. It actually works how it's supposed to work. But if you can get it on Hall of Fame, throw that thing on Hall of Fame. But when you got blinders, you have Deadeye, you got Mismax Expert, and then you got Stop and Pop and Sniper. Those badges in general, those five to six badges I just named, literally makes almost every shot you pull up go in. Those six badges I literally named can make every jump shot you take go in. As long as you time the ball slightly early, slightly late, or excellent release, it's going to go in almost every single time. But when it comes to the other badges like Clutch Shooter, Clutch Shooter I prefer on Silver. It's not a mandatory badge because how good the shooting is and how easy the shooting is. If you miss, you miss. If you make it, you make it. But when it comes to people who play catch and shoot type of basketball, like my lockdowns, my poppers, my stretch bigs, catch and shoot on silver, it's no point of you having on Hall of Fame. I'm gonna tell you that now. No point of you having catch and shoot on Hall of Fame. Corner specialist, you can have it on gold or silver. If you wanna save badge points, you can put it on silver. If you got enough badge points, put it on gold. But look, if you're somebody that's trying to test out set shooter, do not use that badge. And this is why. Catch and shoot boosts the chances to three point ability off immediately immediately at the three-point line but with set shooter you have to wait a small amount of time then shoot the ball so it will literally cancel out if you have catch and shoot and set shooter on so there's no point of you putting set shooter on unless you take off catch and shoot if you have both of them on it's going to put you at a bad disadvantage but when it comes to limitless range spot up limitless range spot up like i said early that will literally have to shoot a 30 foot jump shot. Anything around the hash mark or anything past the hash mark is literally 30 foot jumpers to 35 to 40. But once you get to that 40 mark, it's gonna make you chuck a literally a full court heave type animation or half court heave animation. So you gotta be real sure if you wanna use that badge. But most of the time you're gonna use that badges in rec, pro m 5 v stuff like that. Or even my career if you're trying to get badges. But for anybody that's trying to put the badge points of how you're going to need this, you're going to need at least 25 shooting badges. 25 shooting badges on current gen, 25 to 26 based on what you're going to put on and how your play style is. But if you're somebody that likes difficult shots, you could use that badge as well. Gold will be perfect. Hall of Fame is excessive. It's no point. Gold will be perfect, especially with all the other badges you have. Or you could throw on Circus 3 if you're somebody that loves to do step back threes and you can time them actually great. It gives you a crazy boost. Anything that has to do with shot creating on this game, you get a bigger boost than anything that you do standing still on this game. But before anybody asks me a question about Rhythm Shooter, that's after an ankle breaker animation or if you stun somebody type animation. You get a boost when you break somebody's ankles and for you to be able to hit the shot and have a higher chance. But with that badge, it's really pointless because most of the time, if you don't have playmaking takeover or if you're not using shot creating takeover, on next gen or current gen, you're not gonna get the angle break animation. You might get it off with using Space Creator 
or tight handles this year especially since space creator this year is going to be super overpowered because of the 2k17 hop step cancel animation that you can keep dribbling off of it's going to break a lot of ankles but if you guys like this video it's going to help you decide what badges you're going to put on your player the best badges on shooting and playmaking make sure you drop a like subscribe turn on those post notifications hit that bell and click all if you don't miss videos like this it's been your man shimama and i'm gonna see y'all boys in the next one and i'm out y'all